Uh, let's turn in our Bibles. We're going to go to the book of Revelation. Uh, we're studying the book of Revelation chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Why? Uh, because uh, it seemed like a good idea th at the time. Okay. Um, when, I meet, when I meet visitors out, out in the lobby, I'll, I'll, I'll ask them, have you ever studied uh, Revelation before? And, and usually, nine times out of ten, people will say, uh, no, no, I haven't. And I'll say, well, why not? And they say, because it kind of, it kind of freaks me out a little bit. It's kind of a, a scary, it's kind of a scary book of the Bible. And, um, and I don't know why people would say that. I mean, uh, last week we read about uh, the part where a third of humanity dies in, in, in the whole earth. So I don't understand why they'd be bummed out by the book. You know, the week before that uh, was on the abyss opening and the, uh, and the locust with scorpion power um, being released on humanity. If you weren't here for that one, uh, that was a good time. Okay. Um, you know, th this is, this, uh, if, 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 if I was going to do a church growth series, um, I, I would not be following our model uh, for doing it. Uh, and yet, uh, uh, the book of Revelation is awe-inspiring. Uh, this is such an awesome book. Also, I'll remind you, uh, this is the book of Revelation, not the book of Revelations. So when we're reading it, we're not looking for any uh, particular revelation outside of Christ Jesus. This is, revelation is the, the word ap apocalypse. It's the word uh, to reveal, to, to, to disclose, to unveil. This is the unveiling of Jesus the Christ, okay? So this is the book of the apocalypse of, of Christ, okay? And uh, guess what? That there is an apocalypse of Jesus the Christ on the earth today, and it's the church of Jesus Christ. We are the apocalypse, the, the bride. Uh, uh, we, we are the revealing of, of the headship of Christ on the earth. You little apocalypse, you, okay? Um, <laughs> hallelujah. So we've been having some fun. Uh, I am grateful because this week I'm not going to do a lot of review because we're in uh, Revelation 10, which is right uh, towards the end of the sixth trumpet that is that that was blown um like i said i'm not gonna do a lot of review if you're new here new to this book it, it, it's gonna be a little confusing if you're intrigued okay the series is, is online but john has an encounter where he goes into the spiritual realm he's up in heaven okay and he, he uh, uh sees this scroll it's the lamb's scroll it's sealed shut there's seven seals and these seals start to get uh, torn open. And w when each of these seals is torn open, um, it, 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 there is uh, uh, an act of God's justice that is released onto the earth. So these are the seven seals. So we've studied that. All right, when you get to the seventh seal, it opens up and there is an unfolding of seven trumpets that come out of the seven seals. So these acts of, of judgment, these acts of God's justice, they, they, they exist within each other. One, one, one scholar compared it to like the Russian dolls, the telescoping dolls, where you have dolls inside of dolls. So we, we do see that. We see these seven seals, and it, within the seventh seal comes, okay, it opens up, and then there's another seven, okay, and, and there's seven trumpets. You get to the seventh trumpet, okay, and then you all of a sudden you get into the seven bowls, okay. And so, um, uh, when we were in the sixth seal, something interesting happened, and there was an interlude. It was like a breath of fresh air, and that one was awesome because there is the accounting of the army of God that's being assembled. It's, 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 it's the famous text in Revelation, 144,000, okay? Um, so you have that, and you have the accounting of the Jewish um, tribe. So, so John hears, behold, the 144,000, and he turns to see the army, and he thinks he's going to see 144,000 collected in the in the throne room um, you know the army of God is being assembled and when he turns to see the 144,000 he doesn't see just the 12 tribes of Israel he sees the, the the church the ecclesia he sees every tribe and every nation he sees he sees um, uh, uh, the one new man okay Israel knit together with representatives from every nation 
nation and every tribe. So that's like this amazing interlude uh, there in Revelation um, uh, in the sixth seal where we see the assembly of the army of God just before um, God uh, begins the war. Okay. Um, so um, as we're in the, the seven trumpets, the same thing takes place in the sixth trumpet. And, and this has been pretty, pretty judgment heavy. So when you get to the sixth trumpet here, there is a similar interlude, okay? The same uh, literary uh, sequence uh, is here. And we see this all throughout Revelation, these amazing patterns and how everything's really uh, intricately woven together, almost as if God was behind it. It's very interesting, okay? And, and it's nice because uh, uh, th you got these judgments that are being released, and then we get to Revelation 10. And we don't have to read about a, a judgment today. We get to see this very interesting kind of uh, pause that takes place. And, and within this place, there's a very intera uh, interesting interaction that takes place in, between the heavenly realm and what takes place in John, the author of this, of this text. And it, and it absolutely lines up with what Pastor Matt was talking about, about being sent, okay? So that, that, that thematically just lined up perfectly, as you're going to see here um, in a quick second, okay? So um, Revelation chapter 10. Now, when we're reading Revelation, um, uh, we see that there are the letters to the seven churches. Why? Because um, this was a letter written to the first century church. So it was to them for us. So when we read this letter, we try to put ourselves in their shoes. We try to let's say, if, if, I was, if I was in one of the, if I was in the first century church and I received this letter, how would I read it? So it was written to them for us. It was not written to the American church in 2024. Therefore, we don't interpret the text with the headlines, even though it's so tempting to, especially in light of what we witnessed with the uh, opening ceremony of the Olympics. Now, I did not watch it because I'm a heterosexual. Okay, but I heard about it the, the next day, okay? And I saw all the posts um, that, were, that were going up. And, and so you can't help but say, this is the book of Revelation, right? Like, this is Revelation. Here is, you know, here is the, the fourth horse of the apocalypse. Here, you know, here is the faceless, here is the, the pale rider on the horse of death, okay? Here's the fourth horse, you know, the, here's the pale horse coming in to raise the Olympic flag. Yay! <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the, they actually said that has nothing to do with. Re okay, that was actually Joan of Arc. Okay, I don't know if you heard that. They said that the what what they the, because Joan of Arc was from France. Okay, and so that's and and of course I mean as soon as I heard that I said of course that looks just like Joan of Arc. <laughs> what what were we thinking? Okay, um, I, I felt like such a, an idiot after I heard it was Joan of Arc. Um, and then, but then, okay, and then you got to see, uh, you know, um, the, the fit, you know, whatever, what they did, you know, with the Last Supper and, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, of course, spent his latter years in France, you know, was a patron to the king. And so they thought, hey, let's just do our, our own rendition of the Lord's Supper um, using pedophiles, okay? And uh, uh, people were quite um, upset by it and upset you should be, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> Okay. Does art depict the culture or does art create the culture? It's the latter. That is not a depiction of the moral depravity of the earth. That is a depiction of the realm they would like to carve out in every city and in every nation. Okay. Also, what was the purpose of it? Okay. The purpose of it is to intimidate the saints, to get us to retreat, to say, this is bad. This is bad. This is very bad very <laughs> bad, okay, and it's going to get worse. So this is where we've been talking in our study of Revelation, that if your theology, okay, is that things are bad and they're going to get worse and they're going to get more worse and worse, sir, so it's the role of the church to get out of Dodge to get out of every city, to get out of every nation, okay? I, 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 I'll be at Eden North tonight. I always have a lot of fun when I go up to, to Smoky Point. The reason why is because, okay, I 
and, and I'm not bragging in this, it's just the grace of God, but uh, I am actually a survivor of Y2K. <laughs> okay, so I, okay, I'm not kidding. I survived Y2K, all right? And during that time, everybody knew that the year 2000 was the year that the tribulation was going to begin. So we actually had people uh, leave the church here, this is funny, and move to Smoky Point, because that was the sticks, okay? So they moved to Smoky Point because that was the sticks. And now there are nine Tesla factories that are going in at, at Smoky Point. It is not the sticks anymore, okay? It is this hustling suburb. So I always have a lot of fun with that. I go up to Smoky Point. I'm like, people were escaping here to find refuge from the Antichrist. And now the Antichrist has factories there. So um, <laughs> it's kind of it's fun, okay? So we'll be there, we'll be there tonight, okay? Um, so there is an agenda that, that, that if you want to use the word antichrist agenda, and that is to sow seeds of fear and discord in the church so that we can advocate our role of authority in the name of the end times where we see the rapture as the hope of the world. Okay, the rapture isn't the hope of the world. The, ra the rapture is just the, ho the hope of the elect while the world suffers and goes to hell. That is not, okay, and it's by the way, that word rapture, you'll never actually see it in the book of Revelation. And the word antichrist, you'll never actually see it in the book of Revelation. Okay, but that's a different, that's a different week. So what do I believe? I believe in the prayer of Jesus that when we pray, we would pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed and holy is your name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Where? On earth. In every city and every nation as it is in heaven. Okay? Jesus said this. And then when Jesus, um, uh, okay, he died and was buried, was resurrected, okay? And then he said, do what? He didn't say move to Smoky Point and hide. He didn't say, you know, buy guns and ammo and top ramen and Bud Light <laughs> and just wait for the rapture. Now, don't get me wrong. Y'all should have a lot of guns and ammo and top ramen, <laughs> but not out of fear, just to have a little fun. You can cook that stuff in two minutes. Have a Fully nutritious meal. Add some shrimp to it. <laughs> Jesus said, do what? Go into every city. Go into every nation. Go into all the world and make disciples. Do you see the difference? Fear gets you to, to, to disappear. But courage gets you to show up on the front lines. I'll say it again. Fear comes to get you to disappear. But courage comes to get you to show up on the front lines. Where is the church needed? On the front lines. And that is why when we changed our name from Seattle Bible Center to Eden, we said because it is going to be our Edenic mandate that we're saying yes to that we love Seattle. Seattle Bible Center, awesome. We love revival, okay? We love centers, especially the Science Center in Seattle, okay? We love all of those things. But, um, but God has in his heart for us as a people, cities and nations, Okay, cities, so we've said it like this. Uh, we exist to transform cities and nations with the power and love of Jesus Christ. You say, well, that's, that's very presumptuous. Okay. How, how dare you? How, who do you guys think you are? That you're gonna transform cities and how, how are you gonna do that? We said, well, this is how we're gonna do it. We have four rivers here. Family, okay? We believe that God does everything in the context of family, okay? That's why Jesus said, pray this way, Father, Okay, so uh, we, we, we th th there's, by the way, there's some pretty big agendas for family in America. So we better have a plan and an agenda in the kingdom of God for family. Okay, the second thing is harvest. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that we're willing to leave the 99 to go after the one. That means that we're always looking for opportunities to pate. And what does a party in heaven look like? It looks like when a prodigal son comes home. So we're really big about evangelism, about hitting the streets. Every week we have teams that are hitting the streets that are actively leading people to Jesus, casting out demons, healing the sick. We see more healings from Monday to Saturday than we see here on a Sunday. And we see healings here on a Sunday. Sunday, okay, and it looks like um, justice, 
Okay, this is one of our rivers. What does that mean? In making things right. When we read the newspaper, we say, this is not the way it ought to be. We, we don't, okay, uh, okay, we, we don't just say, well, you know, it's the Democrats' fault, okay? And, and they had their part to play. But we say, this is, this, is the, this is the opportunity of the righteous. Biblically, it's the role of the righteous to make things right. Justice. It's God's idea. Okay? And the last area is renaissance. And what, what do you mean by renaissance? Um, we believe, okay, that revival, okay, the spirit of Christ Jesus at work within a community, that it breaks the church out of a, a silo mentality. And all of a sudden you see the people of God being the church in every sphere of society, from education to entertainment to healthcare to the sciences to family. Okay, all of a sudden oh, we're not going to a building and calling that the church. We say, no, I am the church. Church, and I've been called into the ministry of family and education and welfare and government. And all of a sudden, we break that religious lie that there is such thing as a secular job. Okay, the devil is, okay, unless you're a stripper, that's secular, okay? But, but everything else, okay, that, that, that you should be doing, what you're doing with all your might unto God, unto the Lord. So if you are a member in the body of Christ, you're a minister. You're a minister. You're a missionary. We're on the front lines. We're not looking to get out of here. We're looking to get into here. We're looking to bring his kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. As of when? At the point the lamb was seated on the throne. That is his death his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, his enthronement. His kingdom began after he died, after he resurrected, and once the lamb was enthroned. It's the mustard seed growing little by little. It's the victorious kingdom of God that is at hand, okay? And this is a part of the age, the eon that we are getting ready for. At the end of the book, the church doesn't go up, heaven comes down. So we got to start to develop an occupy theology that like the book of uh, Jeremiah that we go into Babylon. We buy real estate. We start businesses. We have children, lots of them. And we train them in the ways of the Lord to be fruitful, to multiply, and to, sub and to subdue and dominate the earth. This is Christianity, not just moralistic deism. Vote Republican, don't watch rated R movies, okay? Okay, and, 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 not, and go on, so on and so forth. All right, you guys doing all right? I feel like I probably brought like, 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 like 10 to 15% more passion on that introduction than what was needed. <laughs> but I did that for your sake, not for, not for mine. All right. Well, let's do it then. Um, let, let's, uh, there's so many more things I'd love to say about Revelation. I told you I wasn't going to do a review, and then I did. All right, Revelation 10. The big angel and the little scroll. Let's go. Then I saw another mighty angel. Everyone say mighty angel. That means it's a powerful angel. Okay? Coming down. From where? From heaven. Look at this. He's wrapped in a cloud. He's clothed in a cloud. Okay? With a rainbow over his head. His face was like the sun, his legs like pillars of fire, and he had a little scroll open in his hand. Okay, here's the question. Was that a little scroll, or is that just a very big angel? Right? Okay. And he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on land. What is this? This is a link to Ezekiel. Okay, so John is always taking us back into different places in the Old Testament. This is Ezekiel 2, verses 9 and 10. Then I looked and I saw a hand stretched out to me, and in it was a scroll which he unrolled before me. And on both sides of it were written the words, lament, mourning, and woe. Okay, let's go verse 3, back to Revelation. And the angel, look at this, called out with a loud voice, like a lion roaring. He hears the angel speak, and when the angel speaks, the voice of the lion of the tribe of Judah begins to roar out towards him. And when he called out, look at this, the seven 
thunders sounded. And when the seven thunders had sounded, I was about to write, but I heard a voice in heaven saying, look at this. So here's the angel speaking. It sounds like the lion of the tribe of Judah. It's seven thunders roaring, uh, resonating within him. And guess what happens? He begins to discern and decipher the data. And just like you and I, what are we thinking? Where's my journal? Okay, I got to write this down, right? So he goes to write it down, and that's when the angel says to him, seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down, okay? So seven thunders roaring, resonating. Okay, for those of you that want to go to a church where there's no weird stuff, the Bible just isn't for you. By the way, I love that. You know, no weird stuff. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, Verse 5. And the angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land. That's a big angel, okay? That angel's fortified, right? He ain't going anywhere. Um, Look at this. He raises his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and the earth and what is in it and the earth and what is in it and the sea and everything that's in it. Okay, think about this for a second. Think about John for a second. And all of a sudden, here's this mighty angel clothed in a cloud. Okay, rainbow, halo, massive angel, legs of fire, one leg's on the sea, one leg's on the land. Imagine this angel's gonna talk to you. He opens his mouth. The, the lion begins to roar. Okay, I don't know about you, but, but like even lions roaring at the Woodland Park Zoo freak me out. Right? This is heaven. This is like a heavenly, okay? It ain't a roar. It's seven thunders roaring, resonating, and it's filled with data. Okay, it's like Matrix. This is like download time. Okay? How do you know so much? The seven thunders. What? Okay, he goes to write down, don't do that. And then all of a sudden, he watches, he observes this angel. Imagine this. You look at this mighty angel, and this angel has a moment with God. And this angel raises up his right hand as if he's about to be sworn in. And he gives a vow by everything created that there will be no more delay. This angel takes a vow, an oath, before God that there will be no more. Imagine observing this. All right. Good times. What verse are we in? At the first verse, I just started over, and I read it super fast, but I thought I'd ask you to see if you're paying attention. All right, let's do the other way. Uh, And then the voice I heard, uh, uh, okay, all right, let's go verse, um, where where verse are we? All right, let's just do verse 7. But in the days of the trumpet call to be sounded by the seventh angel, the mystery of God would be fulfilled just as he announced to his servants the prophets, the mystery of God, okay? This is the testimony of Christ. This is, this, this is the lamb scroll. This is the authority that you and I have to trample on scorpions and serpents. Not because, not because of our bios or our resumes, but because of where our names are written. He's seeing the journal of the lamb that before the creation of all things, Darren J. Stott was written. Wow, that grants me tremendous authority on the earth. Verse 8, then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me again. Look at this. Go. I wouldn't say go. Okay, so massive crazy encounter here. And then we see this big word, go. Take the scroll that is open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the little scroll. And so he said to me, okay, here you go. He takes the scroll. I imagine big angel, little scroll, receives the scroll. This scroll ain't so small, okay? That's just a really big, that's just a really big angel. Okay, and of course, like, the, the angel has, like, tweezers, okay, and, ha- okay, and hands him the, the little scroll. Okay, all right. And then what does he say? He says, take it and eat it. 
Take it and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. What is this? Yeah, you guessed it. It's Ezekiel. It's Ezekiel 3. This is what God did with Ezekiel. Let's look at it. Uh, Ezekiel 3. And he said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Do what? Eat the scroll, then go. Everyone say go. There's that word again. Go. Uh-oh. All right. Go and speak. Speak to who? To the people of Israel. No, anybody but them. All right. So I opened my mouth and he gave me the scroll to eat. And then he said to me, son of man, eat this scroll. I'm going to give you and fill your stomach with it. And so I ate it. Look at, look at Ezekiel. He says, and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. And then he said to me, son of man, go. Say go. Go now. Say now. Yeah. Go now where? To the people of Israel and speak my words to them. You are not being sent to a people of obscure speech and strange language, but to the people of Israel, not to many peoples of obscure speech and strange language whose words you cannot understand. Surely I had sent them to you. They would have listened to you, but the people of Israel are not willing to listen to you because they are not willing to listen to me. For all the Israelites are hardened and obstinate, but I will make you as unyielding and as hardened as they are. They think they're hard. I'm about to make you hard bro okay I will make your forehead like the hardest stone that's what people say about me harder than flint do not be afraid of them Eden don't be afraid of them or terrified by them though they are a rebellious people guys look at this so I back to Revelation okay the angel has one foot um, on, on, on sea and one foot on land. And we're in Revelation 10 and Ezekiel 3. Going back and forth. So, so back to Revelation 10, verse 9. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the little scroll. He said, take it and eat it. Because in heaven you don't read scrolls. You eat them. True story. He goes, uh, he goes and, uh, and, and it will make your stomach bitter. But in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. Just, just like Ezekiel. And I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and I ate it. It was sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it in my stomach, it was made bitter. And I was told, you must again prophesy about many peoples and nations and languages and kings. Isn't this interesting? In both of these cases, uh, uh, incredible encounter, God and Ezekiel. Okay, you eat the scroll. Now it's inside of you. Okay, and God says, you've got this revelation, but you're about to do something that's impossible. You're about to take a message to people that don't want a message. You're about to send an email to people that don't want to open their email. Okay, um, and the Lord says, I'm going to give you the data, but I'm also going to give you the grace by which you can be obedient to do what I've called you to do. So it's two different things here, okay? It's not just the word, but it's also the grace. It's not just the revelation. It's also the ability to execute. How many of you, you, it's like the problem isn't a lack of knowing. Sometimes the problem is a lack of grace, a lack of empowerment, a lack of opportunity. Yeah. So pretty, uh, pr pretty awesome here. Encounter, okay? And what does the encounter do? It leads to a go. Every encounter with God in the Bible, every encounter with God always leads to a big word, go. You know, it's Isaiah, and it's the cleansing of his lips, and, and he says, I, I've made you an oracle to your generation. An amazing encounter. And Isaiah's like, I'm not worthy. And he's like, now go. Okay, it's Gideon who's hiding in a wine press threshing wheat. Okay, incredible encounter. And God says, now go. It's, it's the disciples after three years of ministry. And Jesus is like, well, I think you know everything you need to know. Deuces, now go. Okay, every encounter with God will always lead to one word, go. Okay, go when? Go now. 
do what? Do what I've called you to do. And in doing it in a way that only you can do it, you will represent who I am in my divinity and in my authority and in my glory as you do you, boo, in me. I will reveal myself through you. God says it to Ezekiel. This is a difficult task, okay? Here's the word. Eat the word. Bring it inside of you. Here's the grace. Now go. And now think of this. John, okay, the author of Revelation, right? Um, he's receiving the next part of the scroll that God is going to release his justice, the making things right. God's about to do that. But how does he do that? Okay, supernaturally from heavenly messengers, from the throne room, okay, um, uh, 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 to the obedient kind of human, if you will, okay, second level messenger who then has, it, it, it's like it has to go to a human so that it can be assimilated onto the earth. Why? Because God has chosen in the first century seven churches by which he will represent himself on the earth and today God has chosen his seven completion his church to be the agency by which he catalyzes his kingdom on the he's sovereign he's supreme he could do some really amazing things like I, I don't think he really ultimately needs us I think he could just be like you know I think that if like you and I were God, we'd just be like, fooey on humans. That pastor did what? Oh, I'm done with the church. Like, right? Like if, if you and I were God, we, we'd be up there like, I'm done with the church. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I'm, no? <laughs> okay. But God looks at the seven churches, says, y'all got a lot of issues. It's all, okay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to address it. I'm going to give you the change, the, the, the grace to grow up. But you, I have chosen you in your imperfection to be the embodiment of my authority onto the earth. Man, that, that kind of, you know, I, I thought I could just like come here on Sunday and maybe tithe and vote for Trump and make it to heaven. I thought that was kind of like the whole thing. Like, that was like the whole thing, right? Like, you know, the whole, like, you know, don't sleep with my girlfriend, right? Like, be nice to Darren, compliment his jacket. Thank you, by the way, right? And um, the, whole, the whole goal is just to, to eventually live as long as possible, okay? Die, right? What, actually, let's be a little more practical. Work our butts off for the system, for the machine, right? Like, just work our little tail. Give our very best, um, to, to, to Microsoft, okay? Just absolutely burn hard and burn out so that we can retire and be obedient to what the Lord is saying, okay? And now we're in our 80s, okay? Or, or like by the time we retire, uh, millennials, we'll be 120. <laughs> no social security check for us, by the way, okay? And now I can be obedient, Okay, I've given my very best to the thing, to the machine. And now, okay, but I'm too tired to be obedient. But it's okay because I'm fully vested and I funded my 401. So now my kids will do it. Not if they follow our lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, until the kingdom becomes more important than our careers, the church will have no authority on the earth. The principle is this, seek first the king and his kingdom and all these other things will be added unto you, okay? So, uh, 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 the, guys, tremendous amount of responsibility and church attendance has very little to do with it. And voting for Trump has very little to do with it. You understanding what God had in mind when he knit you together, like that is kind of important. That is kind of important. And I'm not blaming you. We got lied to. We, we were told, you know, attend Sunday, tithe, vote for Republican. You go to heaven when you die. And don't watch radar movies unless they're about Jesus, right? Then you go to heaven. That is not the goal. The goal to get to heaven is not to get heaven to earth. That is the goal. That is the goal. 
So what do we need? We need an encounter with God. We need an encounter with Yeshua, with the Lamb. We need an encounter. Okay, I love that. An archangel came and possessed me. No, that wasn't an archangel, okay? That was Holy Ghost. That was the Spirit of Christ. That was the burning one. That was the Ancient of Days, okay? And now he's residing in you. Because my friend, biblically, Holy Spirit don't visit nothing. Holy Spirit comes to occupy. We have an occupational God. Our God thinks occupation. We think small. We think logical. We think all I want in, in the context of uh, the metaphor of Abraham, all he wanted was a child. If I could just have an, an, an heir, if I could just have one, and, and God says to Abraham, you, you ain't thinking the way that I think. You, you're, you, you, yeah, sure, I'll give you your one. But I want to show you how I think. Abraham, leave your tent. Come out of your tent and look up at the stars and count the stars. You're asking for a, for a son. I want to make a nation out of you. And listen, God has not changed the way that he thinks. He still thinks, he's, he's just as crazy as he's ever been. And he's looking for a generation that is just as crazy as he is. He's looking for a people that will think big and dream big. He's looking for a people that he can occupy. He's looking for a people that will fear no evil. He's looking for a people that don't get bummed out by the Olympics. They get inspired by it. That sounds like gunshots. Let's go, baby. That sounds like, that sounds like a giant. That sounds like a giant trying to intimidate the people of God. Who does that uncircumcised Nephilim think that he is? Hey, Goliath, it's a good day to die. Ha <laughs> ha! You're asking for a son. God says, I'm thinking nations. I'm thinking nations. It all begins, we've got to have an encounter with God. You've got to have an encounter with God. It's the, it's the place where it begins with, with, this, with this angel and with the roar and with the thunder. It's coming inside of him, okay? It's the voice of the Lord roaring, ripping and roaring, okay, and tearing apart every religious mantra and ideology that is not of God, ripping it to shreds, because God don't think much of our religion. You know, I heard this quote. I got to find out who said it. I just heard this last week on a podcast, and, and I think it's quoted by one of the presidents. I, that could be wrong. You know how the internet is. It's all true. And the, the quote was like, religion exists to keep people from an encounter with God. And I thought, man, that is absolutely true. I don't know who said it. I hope it wasn't Oprah. I th I, you know, it's like, it's easier to rely on a system and to perform to get people to like you than it is to take the time to say, God, I stink and gotta know you for myself. What's the difference between being a Protestant and being a Catholic? Okay, a Catholic, you gotta go through a human mediator to get to God. Okay, for a Protestant, you believe that Jesus has replaced the middleman, therefore you don't get to blame a human priest for your lack of relationship with him. Like if you sin, you go to God and you go to the brother that you sinned against and you make it right. It's very convenient to be a Catholic. Okay, you can just say, Father, forgive me, I've sinned. I've burned down three of my neighbor's homes. I feel bad about it, okay? To do three Hail Marys and, and whatever, okay? It's, it's, it's very, um, okay, it's, it's, it's wonderfully convenient. But when you've got a relationship with God for yourself, when you stand before God and you say, well, I went to my priest and you see Jesus and he says, I am your priest and I made you a priesthood of believers, okay? Jesus has replaced the middleman, which means you have access. That means that you can have an encounter. But know this, don't go seeking an encounter if you're gonna say no when he says go, because I can assure you of this. If you have an encounter with God, it's gonna lead to one, big, fat, inconvenient, go and go now. And he ain't going to call you to the people that you love. He's going to call you to the people that you hate. He's going to call you to the people that hate you because biblically that's the precedent. Okay? 
It, it, it just, it, it, it just kind of sucks to be you. And that's what it says. It's sweet to the mouth, but bitter to the stomach. It's like, oh, it's so beautiful, so good. Oh, why is my stomach? Okay, does anybody have any tums? That's what obedience to God looks like. Oh, it's so sweet. Oh, it hurts so bad. There is a death in the life, and there's a life in the death. And there's nothing more beautiful than to be crucified with Christ. There's nothing more beautiful than to say, this stinks. I don't want to do this. I don't want to say this. I don't want to be this. I don't want to stop doing this. I don't, okay? I don't want to repent, okay? I don't want to be married to you. I don't want to be your father. I don't want to have this job. And you say yes to God. You say yes to God, and it's sweet in your mouth, and it's bitter to your stomach. There's a death in obedience, and the death is good, and you should die to yourself and come alive in Christ. You should say yes to him and let the carnality die. Let it die. Some of us need to die because we live unto ourselves. So it's honey in the mouth and honey in the belly. You better look out. That honey might not be from the Lord. It's sweet to the mouth, okay, bitter to the stomach. It says here, I was filled. I was filled with the seven thunders of God, filled with the data of God. I wanted to process it. I wanted to write it down. And the angel said, you, you just wait. You seal it up. Like Mary pondered these things in her heart. She wanted to tell everybody about what God was doing in her life. And, and, but she didn't. She, she held on. There was something sacred that God was doing in sight of her. John wanted to immediately export this. And the angel says, there is something sacred that God is doing in your life. Seal it up. Then we see after this takes place, the command to eat the scroll, okay? What does that mean? You eat the word, okay? You don't read the word. Anybody that's ever been to heaven and engaged with any scrolls in heaven, I've never heard of anybody reading a scroll in heaven. They always eat the scroll. Why? It's Jesus saying, this is my body that is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. This is not just knowledge. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read another book. R readers are leaders. <laughs> just read another book. Read another book. I've got all these books. Okay. okay. If you actually did what was in those books, you'd be a billionaire and have six-pack abs. I just need, need more knowledge. I need more knowledge. Read another book. Don't read the book. Eat the book. Get the revelation inside of you so it breaks down inside of your gut and it becomes a part of who you are. You know, but the professor says, you know, people say, like, Darren, how do you, uh, how do you prepare for, uh, for this, for what you're experiencing? <laughs> okay, how do, you, how do you do this, you know? What I try to do, I try to get as much in front of me as I po try to eat as much as I possibly can during the week. And I'm not trying to remember it. I'm not trying to analyze it. And I'm not trying to, to, to memorize it. Memorizing the word is great, but I'm just all week long, I'm eating, eating, eating. Okay, going back to the Bible, okay. Reading, reading, okay. Uh, eating, 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 okay. Um, and, and I don't even try to make sense out of it. Uh, just commentary after commentary and, and just eat, 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 okay? Uh, I, I'm, I, I open up to a text. I, I have no idea what that says or what that means. And I'm like, I got to preach on that when? I better eat. Eat, 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 eat. And then guess what? I don't know when it happened. The Holy Spirit, at a certain point of time, the Holy Spirit just shows up and begins connecting the dots. You, you eat the word. You get it. You get it into you. Get all this stuff. It makes no, it makes no sense. But all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes and connects, connects the dots. You get the word into you. You eat the word. And when the Spirit comes, you'll, you'll as Paul Keith Davis says, eat the word, vomit the revelation. Okay? Uh, I like the, the eat the word, vomit revelation. Okay? It's crude. That's why I don't say it. The Hebrews would, would use the word naba for prophecy. That is, you eat the word, you get the word of God, get the laws of God, the, the ways of God inside of you. When the Holy Spirit shows up, 
The, the word nada means bubble up. And that means the word of God, okay, will, will assimilate and sequence itself inside of your spirit. And you, without knowledge of what you're even saying, the word of God will bubble up out of your mouth and you'll begin to prophesy, okay? And this isn't just, this isn't just nothing from nothing. You feed your spirit man and your spirit man knows how to sequence the revelation and knows how to bring it up at the appropriate point, okay? And for this reason, you never have to, to disqualify yourself based off of incompetence or a lack of knowledge when you have the Holy Spirit. Why? Your responsibility isn't to understand it. Your responsibility is simply to eat it. What are you feeding yourself? You've got to feed yourself the right things so the Holy Spirit has the right stuff to work with. Filled with impartation. Filled with thunder. Just declare impartation. Okay, impartation. Eat the revelation. Get it into you. And number three, get ready for your commission. And this is what, this was what Matt was saying. We are an apostolic community that honors apostles. And that means that if you are a member of Eden, you're a sent one. You're a commissioned one. You're, you're a member, therefore a minister, a minister, therefore a missionary. So you have to be aware of your commissioning, of your empowerment. You're trusted. You're trusted by God. I don't say it in a, in a manipulative way. How many of you, your parents ever just looked at you and say, I trust you, man. I trust you. And you realize, no, my, my parents never did this with me, but my friend's parents did. I trust you, Jacob. I trust you, right? And you're like, you don't trust me? Why do you keep saying that? Shut up, right? Just let me do my thing, right? I trust you. No, no. In the kingdom of God, you are so trusted. You are so called. You are so empowered. You are so enabled by, by grace. And I don't know what he was thinking when he decided to set this whole thing up this way. You are, you are a powerful people. And the only thing that would say otherwise would be a religious system that would come to get you to pledge your adherence to a system and to a person that disqualifies direct access and empowerment from the Spirit itself. See how that works? If I can position myself as your priest, then the only way you get revelation is to continue to buy my books. But you can't get any relation, revelation from God. The only way you can get empowerment is to get Darren to lay his hand on you. Okay? So give your life unto Darren. What does that do? That builds a great little local community. Actually, what it does is it, it starts a great little cult. Okay? That's how cults are formed. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be your connection to God. I'll be, your, I'll be your priest. And then what happens? Okay? All of a sudden, Darren's not there for you. Ah! Your whole, your whole world falls apart. Ah! You need to know Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need, the, you need to know the Father. You need the Spirit. Not a visitation. You need a habitation. That, that way He's constantly harassing you. A holy habitation means constant holy harassment. It's the Holy Spirit saying, wake up, let's go. We've got things to do, things to do, things to do. You're like, oh, what do you mean? Let's go. You know that term people say these days? Let's go. Okay. I'll, be, I'll put up a, a message on Facebook, you know. You know. We're going we're, we're gonna to go to City Hall. Okay, everyone's, let's go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's go. Hashtag us. It's biblical. Every encounter with God will lead to an angel saying, let's go. That's what heaven's saying to the church. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go ye. Let's go now. You're not disqualified. You're qualified. Let's go. Peace. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not bold enough for that. One of these days, I'm just going to drop a mic and leave. Still too much fear, man. Can we stand to our feet? I think you guys are awesome. I call you blessed and highly favored. God has created you for such a time as this. He's empowered you by His grace. you believe that today? 
Just say, I do. Cool. Let's pray. Hold out your hands like a receiving posture. Father, I just pray for grace right now, divine enablement to do what you have called us to do. For those that don't yet know Jesus here today, I pray that they would choose this day to make Jesus not just their Savior, but their Lord and their King. If that's you, just say, Jesus, I believe in my heart. Let's do it together. Jesus, I believe in my heart. Say it out loud. I confess with my mouth. I believe you died on the cross for all my sins. I believe you rose from the grave on the third day. Hallelujah. I believe that you're giving me your spirit to enable me to accomplish the call of God in my life. You're a part of the family of God. Hallelujah. Called by God for such a time as this. All right, do this. Just, just declare this right now. Just say, I'm stepping in. Not to a season. I'm done with seasons. That was so 97. Just, just say, I'm stepping into a lifestyle of encounters. I'm stepping into the seven thunders. I'm stepping into the fire of his grace and love. Hallelujah. I'm stepping into a lifestyle of encounters with the Father, with the Son, with the Spirit, with angels, encountering heaven, getting blueprints, eating scrolls, coming back, being obedient, releasing the word of the Lord to a hard-hearted generation. Okay, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, we, we just prophesy a new prophetic voice, not on church platforms, but a new prophetic voice with the grace to address a hard-hearted, ignorant generation. That there would be a, a wave of, of new school prophets uh, in the likeness of Ezekiel and Isaiah who would be locked and loaded with the scrolls of heaven for their generation to bring forth the word of the Lord. E even a John the Baptist, wild ones coming from out of nowhere uh, preparing a generation for encounter with Jesus we even seek Lord your peace for Israel today what do we ask Lord for uh, for a revival for Israel and a revival of apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists Lord even as the fullness of the Gentiles uh, step in uh, in this mighty harvest 200,000 people are coming to know Jesus on this planet every single day and that means that the that a massive harvest of Jewish people is imminent and near and Lord we seek your shalom on behalf of Israel we seek your blessing on behalf of Israel Lord we seek your shalom on behalf of America Lord we seek your shalom and your protection Lord for 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 uh, President Trump we seek your shalom your per, your protection over Kamala Harris we say no assassination attempt um, will Will, will be um, will will be accomplished in Trump or in Kamala Harris that what what the enemy means for evil will be exposed in Jesus name we pray for a subversion of any demonic threat of civil war in our country we ask oh God for the mind of Christ and the helmet of salvation in, uh, to be on the righteous Lord that we would not be triggered Lord by the, the, the schemes of, of racism that are about to be unleashed, Lord, even in the months ahead that will come to divide the church. And Lord, we ask for a maturing of our country that the typical shenanigans associated with a political spirit would find themselves fruitless in the months to come. And Lord, we ask, oh God, that our name, the United States of America, that you would honor this name, that there would be an anointing of unity on our country, that you would unite the states in Jesus' name. Lord, that there'd be a great uniting. We ask, Lord, Lord, that your blood, Lord, your blood would cover every single state in Jesus' name. We ask for revival. We ask for shaking. We ask for awakening. We ask, Lord, for the roar, the seven thunders of God. We ask, Lord, for angelic visitation. We ask for courage in the hearts of the saints. We will fear no evil because you are with us. We love you, Jesus, and all the people of God said, amen, amen, amen. amen.